The second count against uh, you both is a one of a charge of murder, as recognized by Common Article 3.1a of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, as being in violation of the laws or customs of war, punishable under Article 3 and Article 7.3 of the Statute of this Tribunal. Mr. Chermak. How do you plead to this charge? Guilty or not guilty? Justice Sudan. Your Honor, I'm not guilty. Thank you. General Markac, how do you plead to this charge of murder? Guilty or not guilty? Justice Sudan, Nisam Kriv. Not guilty, Your Honor. I thank you, Registrar, for the record. Both accused have pleaded not guilty to the second count. The third count against uh, both of you is uh, one of a plunder of public or private property, this being a violation of the laws of war and customs of war punishable under Article 3E and Articles 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Mr. Chermak, how do you plead to this third count? Guilty or not guilty? Justice Sudan is Ankrif. Not guilty, Your Honor. General Markac, how do you plead to this third count? Guilty or not guilty? Justice Sudan is Ankrif. Not guilty, Your Honor. I thank you. Register for the record, both accused have pleaded not guilty uh, to the third count. The fourth count, again, a uh, count which is common to both of you, is one of wanton destruction of cities, towns and villages, this being a violation of the laws or customs of war, punishable under Article 3b and Articles 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Mr. Chermak, how do you plead uh, to this uh, count? Uh, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. I thank you. And tell uh, Mark, how do you plead to this uh, fourth count? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. I thank you. Uh, Registrar, for the record, both accused have entered a plea of not guilty to the fourth count. Uh, the fifth count. A fifth count is a crime against humanity consisting in deportation uh, punishable under Article 5D and Articles 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Mr. Chemak. How do you plead uh, to this uh, fifth count? Guilty or not guilty? Justice Sudan is Ankrif. Not guilty, Your Honor. Thank you. I thank you. And Colonel uh, General Markach, how do you plead to this fifth count? Justice Sudan is Ankrif. Not guilty, Your Honor. Registrar. Uh, please note for the record that both accused have pleaded not guilty to the fifth count. And we come to the sixth count, which is the penultimate one. Uh, this uh, consists in a charge of other inhumane acts, uh, forced displacement, this being a crime against humanity, punishable under Article 5.1, and Articles 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of this Tribunal. Mr. Chermak, how do you wish to plead uh, to this sixth count? Guilty or not guilty? Justice Sudan is Ankrif. Not guilty, Your Honor. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, General Markach, how do you wish to plead to this uh, sixth count? Justice Sudan is Ankrif. Not guilty, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Registrar, please uh, enter into the records that uh, both accused have pleaded not guilty to the sixth count. And we come to the last count. Uh, this is the seventh count, which is one uh, of uh, criminal responsibility for other inhumane acts, 
being a crime against humanity punishable under Article 5I and Article 73 of the Statute of this Tribunal. And uh, Mr. Chermak, how do you wish to plead to this seventh count? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Thank you. And the same question to you, General Markach. How do you wish to plead to this seventh count? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Thank you. Now that you have entered a plea of uh, not guilty to each of the seven counts that have been brought against you by the prosecutor, uh, I will be instructing the registrar of this tribunal, Mr. Holthaus, uh, to uh, fix a date uh, for the appropriate trial, uh, for, for, for the trial when appropriate. This does not mean that you are to expect the trial to commence uh, within the next uh, weeks or within the next uh, months. I'll try to explain to you what the position is. I want you also to understand that in the meantime, you are going to remain in custody until further order. I will be uh, signing an order for your custody at the end of uh, this uh, sitting today. Uh, however, in terms of Rule 65, uh, provided the trial chamber is satisfied that there are sufficient uh, uh, reasons, uh, you may ask and be granted a provisional release in certain circumstances. Uh, I do not uh, need to go into details here. I suppose this is too early in the day to talk about uh, provisional release, but I do want to uh, advise you of uh, this um, possibility, and I am sure that you will be consulting uh, with your uh, lawyers, who I am sure will be giving you the best advice, uh, basing themselves on the case law of this tribunal, which is now uh, pretty much exhaustive on this uh, matter and uh, provides the guidelines uh, under which um, usually provisional release is granted. There are uh, some further rights that uh, I would like to uh, draw your attention to before we come to an end. And the first uh, matter that I want to touch upon is the following. The fact that you have entered a plea of not guilty today does not mean that this is an irrevocable step that you have taken. You can, upon the advice uh, of your lawyers, uh, entertain the idea of perhaps coming to some kind of a plea agreement with the prosecution. Uh, there is a procedure to be followed, and your lawyers will be familiar with this and will be able to advise you. Please do not take what I am saying as an invitation uh, to enter into any kind of plea agreement with the prosecution. I'm just advising you that this possibility exists and has been made use of by several uh, other uh, detainees uh, that we have here who have been uh, found yourself themselves in the same position that you are in today. I also wish to draw your attention to Rule 63 of uh, this tribunal, uh, which provides that uh, questioning by the prosecutor of an accused, including after the initial appearance, shall not proceed without the presence of counsel unless the accused has voluntarily and expressly agreed to proceed without counsel present. If the accused subsequently expresses a desire to have counsel, questioning shall cease immediately and shall only resume uh, when the accused counsel is present. I'm sure that uh, your lawyers are aware of this uh, provision and I have no reason uh, to doubt that it uh, will be uh, strictly applied by the prosecutor. There I am aware 
I'm not aware of one single case when uh, the prosecution did not abide by this uh, rule. Should there be uh, any such questioning, um, uh, you ought to know that uh, even if there is a waiver on your part to counsel being present, uh, all this shall be audio recorded or video recorded in accordance with the procedure provided for somewhere else in our rules. And in addition, uh, the prosecutor uh, at the beginning of the question uh, will uh, caution you in accordance with uh, our rule 42A3, uh, which uh, basically uh, requires the prosecution uh, to advise you that you have a right to remain silent uh, and that any statement that uh, you make uh, may shall be recorded and may be used in evidence. That is the first uh, matter that I wanted to touch upon. A provisional release I have already uh, mentioned. Uh, the other matter is this. In a few minutes uh, time you will be taken back to the detention unit. It doesn't mean at all that you are going to be forgotten there, that nothing will happen until it, we are ready to have the trial. Uh, in conformity or in line with the uh, basic requirements of uh, uh, international human rights, especially as they are applied here in Europe, uh, we are required to uh, have what we refer to as status conferences. And these are held periodically. Our uh, Rule 65 BIS requires that uh, a status conference is held at least uh, within uh, 120 days following the previous uh, status conference. In the case of today, uh, it means that the first status conference uh, must be held not later than 120 days uh, starting from today. These uh, status conferences uh, serve uh, multiple uh, purposes. Uh, the main being uh, it will give the opportunity, uh, first of all, to you to come face to face with uh, the pre-trial judge. Uh, secondly, it will give the uh, trial chamber an opportunity to organize between the parties, prosecution and the defense, um, uh, exchanges in order to ensure an expeditious preparation for the trial. And uh, it will also give us, uh, the pre-trial judges, um, uh, an opportunity to um, review uh, the uh, case uh, as it uh, happens to uh, the, 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 the situation, the status of the case as it happens to be at the time, and also to give you the opportunity to raise uh, issues in relation to the case, um, uh, including issues that may relate to your state of detention and also to your physical and uh, mental uh, uh, health. Um, uh, I happen to be the presiding judge of trial chamber two, and therefore I also have a responsibility uh, within uh, the next few days uh, to appoint, uh, designate um, uh, from amongst the permanent members of my trial chamber a pre-trial uh, judge. Uh, for the time being, my intention is to uh, assign myself as your pre-trial uh, judge, um, uh, and I intend to remain your pre-trial judge until uh, I can uh, carry the load, considering uh, the fact that I am in the process of drawing up a uh, judgment in a very difficult case, and uh, that I have some other cases. But the other two permanent judges are also extremely busy, and I think it's only fair at this uh, moment to carry the burden myself. So I will be your presiding judge. I will issue the order um, either later on today, if we are still in time, or on uh, Monday at the latest. 
uh, there is also one last matter that I wanted to uh, raise, and uh, this I am addressing uh, both to the uh, prosecution and uh, in, in, as a result also to you. And uh, I'm referring to uh, Rule 66, uh, which uh, makes it incumbent on the prosecutor, uh, of course subject to the limitations to the provisions of uh, Rules 53 and 69, uh, to make available to the defense in a language uh, which the two accused understand uh, within 30 days of, uh, from today, uh, copies of the supporting material which accompanied the indictment uh, when confirmation was sought uh, from Judge Parker, as well as all prior statements uh, obtained by the prosecutor from the accused, if there are any. Uh, the second part of uh, Rule 66A, uh, that is paragraph 2, I don't uh, think we need to go into at this uh, stage, uh, that may uh, come up later on. There are other uh, matters that fall under uh, Rule 66, which again we will, uh, these are pleasures yet to come, we will be dealing with these uh, in the course of the uh, status uh, conferences that we will be holding. Uh, however, parallel with this obligation of the prosecutor to hand down to you the material, the supporting material that I have mentioned within 30 days from today, uh, our rules in Rule 72 um, uh, provide that uh, you will have 30 days, and uh, Defence Council, please uh, take note of this, uh, you will have 30 days after the disclosure by the prosecution uh, to, to the defence of all material and statements referred to in the paragraph uh, which I read out, that is paragraph 66A1, uh, you have 30 days within which to file uh, any preliminary uh, motions in terms of Rule 72. Uh, these are limited, um, uh, namely the motions I am referring to are uh, motions challenging jurisdiction, uh, motions alleging defects in the form of the indictment, uh, motions which seek that the trial does not continue with the two of you uh, being together, but are seeking the sever severance of the counts uh, joined in one indictment under Rule 4 to 9, or to seek separate trials. And also preliminary motions which raise objections based on the refusal of a request for assignment of counsel made under Rule uh, 4 to 5. Now, this brings me back to uh, Rule uh, 60, uh, um, uh, 62, which imposes uh, on me, as uh, presiding judge in this initial appearance, the duty to satisfy myself uh, that the right of the accused to counsel is respected. Now, I notice from the information that I have that uh, uh, the only problem that there may still be is uh, with regard to um, uh, Mr. Miroslav Sebavovic uh, as legal representative and as preferred lead counsel uh, of accused Markac. I think uh, from the uh, looks of it, there are no uh, preliminary problems with regard to Cedo Prodanovic uh, as representing uh, Mr. Cermak and with regard to Mr. Mikulicic uh, representing as co-counsel uh, uh, General, General Markac. The right to uh, a council of one's own choosing is respected by this tribunal, but it is not an absolute right. It uh, doesn't mean to say, for example, that you can bring uh, with you to represent you here anyone you like. We have got our rules and uh, we, the registrar uh, needs to be satisfied that 
the lawyers that uh, you suggest uh, satisfy the standards that we have set, both with regard, for example, to uh, qualifications as uh, well as with uh, familiarity with one or more of the languages of this tribunal, as well as with uh, ethical, uh, ethical standards. Um, uh, in other words, your right to counsel is qualified by these considerations. Uh, also, your right to have counsel paid by this tribunal is regulated by our rules, uh, which the registrar will apply. I am here to make sure that your rights are respected, not just these rights, but all other substantial, uh, substantive and procedural rights. And I want to make myself clear to you, if at any time you feel that your rights are not being fully satisfied, please come back to me uh, through your lawyers, uh, as, uh, preferably, and bring uh, any such complaints to my attention, and I will attend to them. I also want to make clear that everyone here has his own uh, jurisdiction. The registrar has his own jurisdiction, the prosecutor has her own jurisdiction, and uh, we, as the uh, judges of this tribunal and trial chambers, we have got our jurisdiction. And we can only interfere with some of the decisions of the registrar in certain limited cases, but uh, even so, if a decision is taken with which you are aggrieved, there is a remedy that our rules provide for. Uh, it being either a direct appeal to uh, the trial chamber or a direct appeal to the president of the tribunal in certain circumstances. As you go along, and if there are problems, I'm sure that uh, you, are, uh, very, you, are very, you are in capable hands and your lawyers will advise you, advise you accordingly. We are quickly coming to an end. And before we close, I would like to know if on the prosecution side there is other, any matter that you would like to raise. Mr. Scott. Uh, no, Your Honor, uh, we will uh, make the disclosures in a timely manner, I'm sure, within the 30 days. We anticipate filing later today a motion for protective measures in connection that will enable us to make those disclosures. Thank you. I thank you, and I'm sure uh, of your cooperation. Um, uh, I start first with uh, counsel for Mr. Chermak. Uh, is there any matter that you should like to raise at this stage? No, thank you, Your Honor. We have no matter which we should like to raise at this stage. Except as the defense counsel for Mr. Chernak, I should like to tell you that very soon we will avail ourselves of the rights of Rule 65, the ones that you mentioned, in view of the fact that we consider that we have all the conditions to uh, table a request for provisional release. So we shall be filing that with the tribunal. Uh, thank you, and when you file that, it will be given all due uh, attention. Uh, may I remind you that that is a matter which uh, the entire uh, trial chamber will uh, need to consider. It's uh, not something that the pre-trial judge alone uh, can decide alone. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Counsel for uh, General uh, Markic, is there any uh, matter that you would like to raise on behalf of your client. Uh, your Honor, we have nothing at this point in time, no matters to raise, except to say that, like the defense of General Chermak, we too would like to say that we shall be filing a motion similar to the one they, ha they shall be doing. All right. I want to make sure of uh, one thing before... Um we adjourn. Uh, I was made uh, privy uh, to uh, uh, some documentation that uh, you both uh, filed. Uh, 
relating to uh, the health and medical condition of your respective uh, clients. Uh, for the time being, I only want to know whether that has been uh, resolved to your satisfaction. Your Honour, on behalf of the accused, Mr. Chermak, I should like to say that I handed over all the medical documents yesterday which indicate that he has uh, troubles with his uh, spine and a uh, high blood pressure. And he has been prescribed some medicines for that. And as far as I know, he was examined medically today by a physician. And I think that this procedure is progressing well, that he is being taken care of. If there is something amiss, we shall, of course, address the court in due course. Thank you. I thank you. Uh, Mr. Chermak, touching on, uh, on, on this matter, do you uh, wish to add anything to what uh, your lawyer has just stated? Is there anything else that uh, I can do for you in this, in this area? I'm, I'm pretty sure that the matter will be attended to in the most efficient manner by, by uh, the detention unit. Um, uh, but I also want to make sure that you are fully satisfied that your medical condition is being attended to in an efficient uh, manner. Your Honor, the medical staff in the detention unit are extremely courteous and are doing their best for me. I have talked to the medical staff myself and they have accepted the documents and I am given my medicines every day without any problems there. The registrar will do his best to see that my back is seen to and that I will be given an orthopedic bed because I have troubles with my back, but I thank you for your concern. I thank you. Thank you. And counsel for General Markac. Again, uh, same question, same matter. You also addressed some uh, matters related to your client's uh, health. We don't need to go into details, neither with Mr. Chermak nor with Mr. Markach, even though we're talking of minor things. But uh, has the matter been resolved to your client's satisfaction, uh, to your knowledge? Your Honour, we visited our client this morning and he informed us that with respect to the medical documentation and treatment, everything is satisfactory. I thank you. Uh, General, uh, same question to you. Uh, do you wish to add anything to what has uh, been uh, just been stated by your counsel? Your Honour, I should like to confirm what uh, my counsel has just stated. And uh, should there be uh, reason to draw my attention uh, to uh, uh, some requirement that uh, you need to be attended to, uh, please do let me know straight away. Uh, inside the detention unit, uh, there are the facilities that uh, allow for, for medical attention uh, to be given uh, promptly. There may be instances in which uh, one uh, requires medical attention from outside the detention unit. Um, uh, that is not always dependable on the detention unit itself, but it depends on other circumstances. Uh, if there are uh, reasons for concern, uh, please do bring those uh, to my attention. As I said, uh, one of the duties of the trial chamber uh, is to ensure that all your rights uh, are uh, fully respected. Uh, is there anything else uh, you would like to uh, raise? I know that your lawyers don't have, uh, they don't have any other method that they would like to raise. If you have other, yes, Mr. Chairman. Charles Your Honour, I should just like to thank you for your concern and attention with respect to our health and everything else. Thank you. It is very kind of you.
Thank you. So with that, I think we can uh, close this initial appearance. Uh, as I said, I will give instructions to the, to the registrar to start uh, planning uh, for uh, this case to come uh, to trial. And in the meantime, on our part, we will also try uh, to start planning for the status conferences. And with the cooperation of everything, we should try to accelerate, we'll do our best to accelerate the proceedings to have this uh, case come to trial the earliest possible. I thank you all and good afternoon to everybody. All right, we have all of it.